Welcome back to the third video in my Gundam Battle Operation 2 guide series. By now, you may have had some practice and have developed some skills of your own. Believe it or not, there are a variety of different ways you can play the game that you will soon discover if you choose to stick with it long enough. That includes different ways of playing each mobile suit. At this point, you may even begin to feel like you're outgrowing the mobile suits that I recommended to you and would like to know if there are other suits to match your needs. In this video, we are going over how to increase your rating so you can acquire better suits sooner than later. Let's begin. First of all, ask yourself, why do you want to increase your rating? Is it really important to you? Are you a competitive gamer or more on the casual side of things? There are a few reasons why someone would want to increase their rating. For me, it was so I can gain more experience and data points per match. Aside from that, I don't much care for it. I might be able to further increase my rating. The issue, however, is that I consider the A plus and S ratings to be the no fun leagues. And I'm more of a casual gamer. No need to prove myself to anyone. I'm happy in terms of skill level and what fun I can find. As for you, if you want to increase your rating just so you can have a high placed letter next to your gamer tag, I recommend you wait and spend some time playing quick matches. Enjoy your time of innocence and in playing in the pool of D minus rated players. Learn what you like, what you don't like, and where you excel the most at. Either way, the game will eventually force you to increase your rating regardless in order for you to get promoted. Once you start getting good and basically dominate matches is when I recommend playing rated matches. At the same time, when you think about it, at least for D- and all the way to C+, it pretty much consists of similar skilled players. So in any case, you're free to start playing rated matches right from the start. There really is no level or rank requirement before you can start joining said matches. Here are some things you should always consider when joining a rated match. Number 1. Pick 2 or 3 mobile suits in the same cost range that you are comfortable using, at least one specifically that you are really good with. Make sure you have all 2 or 3 of these suits ready to go. Most importantly, make sure that each suit belongs to a different class. For example, let's say you want to play support, but there are already 2 supports on your team who have already readied up before you. Since you already have a general or raid also ready to go, there is no need to panic in finding another suit. Number 2. Choose your battles wisely. Only play in cost ranges that have mobile suits you are comfortable playing against. If there is a mobile suit you tend to see at, let's say, 600 that you usually struggle against, then it might be best to avoid any 600 cost matches, or whatever cost range that may be for you. Think of this as always picking the home field advantage that you want to play in. Number 3. In the case for specific matches that are set on one specific map, it's best to be familiar with that map. Don't play on a map that you know you struggle on. So, for example, let's say for the next two hours, the basic rating match is set to the underground base map, and you, for whatever reason, can hardly ever perform well on it. Then it might be best to avoid playing in that specific game mode. Number 4. Know when to call it quits. Some days are not going to go your way. That's okay. We can't win them all. Maybe you lost two or three straight matches. For whatever reason, things didn't go your way. To prevent your rating from lowering any further, it might be best to either go back to quick matches or leave the game entirely for the day. And number 5. Hey, it's okay if your rating drops. Seriously. Well, I am a casual gamer, so we may have different outlooks on things, I admit, if you're more on the competitive side of things. My view on it, however, is that it's not something I can put on a resume for a job interview. We all have setbacks anyways. No need to lose our heads over it. Again, it may be that it just wasn't a good night. Put the controller down and come back the next day. I might be able to understand if you happen to be in a clan that has a specific rating requirement for all members. But again, that's more on the competitive side of things. And that's not my kind of vibe. That's not to say that my tips in this video can't help you. They still can. Just pace yourself is all I'm trying to say. One other thing I do need to recommend to you is check your internet speed before entering a rated match. Gundam Battle Operation 2 is unfortunately not the most understanding when it comes to losing connection to a host in the middle of a match. Also, the game's connection is not always the greatest, which is putting it lightly, if I'm to be honest. So to make sure that doesn't happen, I recommend to test your internet speed. If your upload speed is below 30 megabytes per second, then it might not be a good idea to play a rated match. If you can, find an internet cable to ensure you won't disconnect. The game will not forgive you, even if it's not your fault. Now that about does it for my advice on rated matches. This next part is about some of the hidden gems in the game that are available to lower ranked players who are just starting off. For 200, I'm still gonna go with my boy, the GM Kai. 
200 cost matches are as basic as it gets, and the GM Kai really has all that you need. You do also have the level 3 GM trainer that you can use. If you followed my first video, you should already have this in your hangar ready to go. For 250, you should already have the Zaka 2 Kai in your hangar. The game also gave you this one for free. For me, I personally use it with the machine gun since it also comes with a grenade launcher. Add the secondary grenades and it should make for some good practice in alternating between multiple weapons. For 300 to 400, try the Zaka 2 for talent with the machine gun. It works the same way as the Zaka 2 Kai, but comes with two dot rolls and a stern frost instead of grenades. And for 450, in terms of what is available to lower ranked players, I recommend the Galgook High Mobility Type. This thing should have already been given to you for free as well. To get the most out of it, I recommend buying the High Mobility Rocket Launcher, as it has a faster rate of fire compared to the regular bazooka that it comes with. You can also try out its beam rifle. It actually does pack a mean punch, but might take some getting used to when it comes to focusing beam rifles. Moving on over to 500, grab the Gundam Mark II. There's a reason why even veteran players love this suit. If you've been practicing with the Gundam and have been wishing for it to be more maneuverable, the Mark II gives you exactly that. The Mark II also comes in four different levels, meaning that you can take the level 4 into 650 matches. However, it is important to note that the level 4 is not made available to you until you are promoted in rank, so only levels 1 to 3 are available to you at the start. 550 is where things get a little tricky. If you're starting to feel yourself be drawn more towards close range combat, then I recommend the Gundam GP-03. It has a mean downswing and two dodge rolls. This one can go all the way to 700 with the higher levels. But again, 650 and 700 are not available until you rank up to at least a lieutenant. I do also have to be really honest, unless you really like and even love this suit, I wouldn't recommend it to take it into 650 and 700. Two years ago it was fine, but things are different now. But then again, if you are playing with other new players, they may not have that many crazy new suits with crazy weapons. If you feel you are becoming more of a mid-range fighter, then I recommend the Zero Shiki. I have just started using this mobile suit not long ago, and it is very quickly becoming one of my favorites. And its primary beam rifle is as close to Mega Man's Arm Buster Cannon as it gets in GBL2. It has a low heat rate, meaning it can fire fast, and it has a relatively fast focus rate as well. The Zero Shiki goes all the way to 650, but of course, only levels 1 and 2 are currently available to you. The benefit of these two mobile suits over the next two that I'm about to mention is that they can be used for both ground and space. As for the last two that I'm about to mention, well, they might cost you a bit more. For ground combat, I can think of no other hidden gem to recommend to you other than the Gundam GP-01. I actually prefer it over the GP-03, since it has a level 3 melee priority meaning that when it comes to fighting most other generals and all supports, your melee swings will always win over theirs. This thing is a true beast of possibilities. You can use it from 550 all the way to 700 once you're able to purchase the levels 3 and 4. And yes, it can do well in 700 once you have enough experience. It has a basic weapons kit with just a beam rifle and head vulcans. But don't be fooled, its head vulcans are not like the rest. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the GP-01 is only limited to the ground. For space, you will need to purchase another suit. For this, there is good news and bad news. The good news is that the GP-01 FB is basically the same as the GP-01, but for space. It can basically do all the same things. Its down melee swing is a little different, however, and will need some getting used to, but overall, the same. The bad news is that it will cost you a bit if you want to get the levels 1 through 4. All these suits are currently available for 550 and 600. Unfortunately, in order to purchase the 650 and 700 mobile suits, you will need to rank up to at least an instant or lieutenant. That may take you a while depending on how frequently you play, but it's not too difficult. Just remember to pace yourself. You can also gain more XP per match if you increase your rating. Another way you can try to get these mobile suits earlier is if you check the recycle ticket counter every day to see if they are ever made available. This goes against what I recommended in the first video when I suggested that you wait until you rank up, but I can understand if you don't want to wait that long. And your last hope is to save up on your gold tokens. Try saving up for every time there is a half off discount on the tempo supply drop. You might get lucky. Hell, you might get something better that is currently not available in the data point store. At the beginning of every month, you can also get 3 free supply drops for the first weekend. So that's going to do it for my GPL2 guide series. I hope these three videos have been able to help you get off to a good start. As always, this has been Mobile Suit K9, signing off.